what age? Bert, I know, was eight years old when he started cutting his teeth. Where was uh, where was Mike in that range? Yeah, I didn't get my pilot's license until I was about 26, but I built models. My dad was in the South African Air Force and mosquito photo reconnaissance mosquitoes flying out of North Africa and taking pictures of bomb damage assessment in Europe. So he was a big uh, flying guy. My uncle had a, a, a Tiger Moth, so I used to fly with him when I was only four or five years old. So aviation has been a, a big thing in my life, but I didn't have the way, the means or the money or anything else until I became uh, older. And then I had a, we were, I was a partner in a small company in Anderson, Indiana, and uh, we were supporting a product that we made, and it, I was traveling a lot in the airlines, and so I went to my brother-in-law and said, one of us needs to get a pilot's license, we can rent a plane, we can go to these small airports where, where all the companies are that we need to service. And he said, well, I do, I do not believe in flying airplanes. He said, you used to ride motorbikes, why don't you get a pilot's license? So the company paid for my pilot's license, my commercial, my instrument rating. So I was very, very lucky there. I couldn't afford to rent airplanes to fly my family around, but I did a lot of flying for the company. So we came to Oshkosh in 1970. First year I was here. Exactly. And, Is uh, that where you met Bert? That's, no, I met him a couple of years after that. But uh, we looked to see. Somebody at Anderson said, hey, you need to go to Oshkosh if you want to get an airplane. Build one yourself. Doesn't cost anything. It's a little bit of work, and pretty soon you're out flying. And uh, <laughs> that may not have been exactly accurate. But I tried to build a Nesmith Cougar a long, long, long time ago, 1971. Uh, I ended up uh, unable to complete that because of business commitments. And then I met Bert Rutan at the airport here. He sold me a set of very big plans for $53, right out of his airplane, which probably is illegal anymore. And uh, I was the first person to ever complete one of those. When you first met Bert, uh, Bert has got a very powerful personality. And I remember back in the early 70s, I love Bert. He's a great guy. What was your initial reaction when you met him? Was it uh, one of, this guy knows a hell of a lot, or mm, I don't know? <laughs> a little bit more of them, mm, I don't know. He's, uh, it took a little while to get to know him. Uh, I count him as one of my best friends. He's, he was my boss for the last 33 years, and uh, I've been his, be his best man at two different weddings. So we're very good friends, and uh, we always have been. Flown a lot together. I've flown just about every single thing he ever made. So uh, I, I have enormous respect for Bert. His ability as a designer, as a conceptual designer, is unsurpassed by anybody. When you first met Bert, and did, did you realize, I'd like to do business with this guy, or I'd like to become his partner, or I'd like to be his test pilot? Take me through the, the metamorphosis of how this came Yeah, I, I don't think I felt those things when I first met him. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's, it's, it's kind of hard to get his attention. He's... Um, you know, he's standing there, and it appears to be listening, but he's thinking about something else. You know who he is, so <laughs> that makes it much harder. So how did you get to become such a good friend with this guy? I, well, I know we, 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 Sally and I jumped in our very big, and we had a business call to make in Portland, Oregon, and one in uh, San Jose, California. We flew the very big and to those two places, and we were going back and noticed that we were over Mojave. <laughs> and worried about the restricted area that was coming up. So I thought, well, wow, this is where Bert lives. So we dropped in on him, and he took us out to lunch. First, he jumped in my airplane and said, uh, you know, went flying in it, came back, said, wow, it flies just like my one. What do you do for a living? <laughs> I told him, and he took us to lunch, and he offered me a job. Wow, that quick. Well, that quick. When the fact that you were flying the very big and you bought the, the plans from him and, and made it yourself, did, was that thinking about that. Did that, is that what impressed him about you, or was it you trying to make an impression on him? No, no, I think that might have been it. You know, when he saw the plane and realized we built it quicker than anyone else had, and uh, it flew well, I mean, we flew it all the way across the United States. He flew it, he liked it, he liked how it looked. Uh, we were reserve grand champion at Sun and Fun that year, and I think Bert thought, hey, here's a guy who could help me support builders who were building very vegans. And he was swamped, remember? He had built, he had designed the very vegan. He was dealing with those guys on the, in the mail. There was no email then. And on the phone, and it took up a lot of his time. And he was trying to do the very easy. As he was developing the, the I, I think it, last call was in the 40s, he developed everything from scratch. 
Right. Every time he developed something, first of all, what was Mike's reaction? Were you going scratching the head going, oh boy, and when did you decide, maybe I will be the test pilot, or maybe I'm going to stay here on the ground and let somebody else do the dirty work? No, I couldn't wait to get my hands on anything he designed. And, uh, you know, sure, I scratched my head a little bit looking at things like Proteus sort of shook me a little bit, Grizzly did, and, um, <laughs> but I've flown everything except the AD-1, the White Knight 2, and the uh, Spaceship 2. So I've flown every one of his airplanes besides those. Again, for those of you that are just joining us, I've got to let Mike go a little early because he's got a briefing, a pilot's briefing coming up because he's flying today. Let's get on to Spaceship One, Mike. When when Bert first started talking about uh, doing a space launch, for the lack of a better term, um, I know you were always impressed with his abilities. Did you really scratch the head on that one and say, uh, maybe you're biting off more than you can chew, Bert, or what? I thought that, but I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> he came into my office one day, and my office right across the hall from his. We could look at each other sitting at our desks, and he said, I believe that we can go to space at this point in time. It was the same kind of announcement when he believed that he could fly an airplane all the way around the world on one tank of gas. And with Bert, you can't just laugh that off, you know. <laughs> and whenever he makes a statement like that, it's usually serious. And I thought to myself, wow, poor old Bert, he's gone over the edge here, maybe. But when he laid it all out, how he thought it could be done, it was very logical, it made sense to me, and I desperately wanted to fly the spaceship. How far before 2004, three? three when you guys, it was four, wasn't it? Four was when we went to space. space. We first, I did the first flight on Spaceship One in 2003. Okay, how many years before that was the idea of coming together in Bert's head? Uh, a lot of years before that. He was working on the idea in his head when we built the Proteus. The Proteus was the original thought to be the, the mothership to carry a spaceship, but it didn't work out that way. Um, and then he started thinking of other ways to do it. And as you got up close to the, your first test, your test flights, excuse me, in 2000, Take me through the altitudes. Did you just go up to 10,000 feet, or did you go up to 30? How did you incrementally work your way into space? Well, initially we had to develop the White Knight, the original White Knight, and that was about a one-year flight test program. I was heavily involved in that. Uh, Doug Shane did the first flight. I did most of the flying after that. And we, we developed the, the pressurization system, the environmental control system that would keep you alive in the spaceship. We developed that on White Knight, and uh, we didn't use the jet engines to, pro to provide us with pressurization and temperature controls. We figured that we had to have something other than that with a rocket motor. So a lot of the development for Spaceship One was done in White Knight, and a lot of the flying, and it was exactly the same cockpit, the parts came out of the same molds, it was identical. When you were sitting in it, the only difference was there were throttles in the White Knight, and engine instruments, and in the Spaceship, there was just a switch to turn the motor on. Was there a lot of hiccups along the way, or was it a pretty yeah. good, smooth sailing all from it, the get-go? It was amazing how smooth sailing it was. We've had a lot of hiccups with other airplanes. Even the Long Easy was was a major development program. You know, we started out with very easy wings on that; they didn't work. Then we came up with Defiant wings, which did work, and uh, we had eight different iterations of vertical fins on that airplane. Through the flight test program with Dick Rutan and I sharing the flight testing. That was a, a major event, and I thought all flight testing was like that. Spaceship One was a, was a we only had one faux pas with that, and uh, the tails were too small. The horizontal tails were just, uh, there wasn't enough tail volume. We didn't have enough pitch authority, and uh, I had a departure, and it took me about 20,000 feet to recover, and got my attention pretty good. <laughs> but I said, when I landed, I said, the tails are too small. And then they went through this huge program where they built a whole full-scale boom with a tail on it, put it in front of a truck, drove it at 100 miles an hour, and measured all the forces. And they came back and said, after weeks, the tails are too small. For those, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that don't know, Bert's, Bert's version of a wind tunnel is the top of a, a pickup yeah. truck. <laughs> right. Um, no, and we've done that a lot, and it works very, very well.